for peace. Enjoy. With love. Now our salvation has drawn near. With the psalmist, we share the good news. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. May this light be a sign to us and to the world of all that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. Christ's light shines in our darkness. Glory to God in the highest.
Father, now in flesh appearing, we have come to adore you, to sing glory to God in the highest with angels, to journey unto Bethlehem with shepherds and kings. But do not leave us, and do not let us leave this place without appearing, without appearing in our own flesh and blood and muscle and bone. Turn our hearts this night toward the brightness of your dawn, our minds to the delight of your law, our souls to the depth of your love, our hands and feet to the work of justice and peace for the world you came to save. Amen.
Friends, Christ our Savior gave himself for us that he might redeem us from our sin and claim us as his own people. Therefore, trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin together. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ you came among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to the glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Beloved, hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
Beloved in Christ, you are welcome here on this Christmas Eve and indeed at all times. We give thanks that God gathers us from near and far into his presence. And we hope that you will let us know of your presence and how best we might be praying for you in this Christmas season by signing the pew pad, either at the end of your pew or online. All along our Advent journey, we have watched and waited for the one who will always reach out to us in love. Yet even on this night, as we celebrate Christ's arrival, we know that we are still waiting for the fullness of God's promises made manifest. And so for many, the waiting is hard. So we carry in our hearts this night all those who find themselves in deep longing. We especially carry with us the Reverend Lynn Ports, our beloved colleague and pastor and friend, as she undergoes treatment for breast cancer. We continue to coordinate support for Lynn in this time through the church's care team, and Lynn has expressed deep gratitude for all the prayers and love that you all, her church family, have been pouring out upon her. So please continue to join us in fervent prayer for Lynn and Doug and their family. For we trust and proclaim that the God who chose to come into our midst as a vulnerable infant, who bore all our burdens on the cross, and who ascended victorious over all that troubles God's people, is indeed with us, with all people. So let us now turn to God's holy word, seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit that Christ may be born again within our hearts and his love made manifest throughout the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, show us the word made flesh, good news of great joy for all, so that we may sing with the angels, glory in the highest and peace on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Hear now God's word for us this night. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the gar garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our first gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. By your light, O God, may your word and these human words be light for us, shining against the backdrop of this holy night. And may dwelling in scripture cause us to shine the light of your love into a beautiful and broken world in desperate need of your healing, your truth, and your grace. Amen. Shortly after we moved here to Pittsburgh, our border collie puppy Hermione wiggled out of my husband Mark's grasp just as he was adjusting the size of her collar. I don't know if you're familiar with the breed, but border collies are sheep herders, bred for speed and agility. A nearly one-year-old puppy full of youthful vigor and muscle mass is fast. So when she bolts away from us toward joyful freedom, we mere humans are incapable of keeping up. Hours went by and still we could not find her. I posted a desperate plea for help and a photo on the next door app, even as I prayed that Hermione would not be run over by a car on our busy street. Mark and our son Micah searched the area near our home on foot and by car. Micah's new friends at school even formed a search party, and that is when I knew they were keepers. But it was getting dark, and the friends eventually needed to go home. As night began to fall, and as we agonized about the possibility of Hermione being lost for good, Mark and Micah saw a glimmer deep in the woods behind our home. Nightfall revealed what the daylight could not, the shimmering eyes of our beloved, hard-headed canine, who was stuck in a ravine, trying but failing at making her way home. Our joyful reunion happened at nightfall, just as stars began to pierce the darkness. Which is exactly how I picture the angels appearing to shepherds in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. I imagine the shepherd were there with their own beloved sheepdogs, not particularly looking forward to the frigid night ahead. Surely the sudden inbreaking of glory of the angel of the Lord shone around them only and precisely because it was dark. It's interesting to note that darkness seems to be one of God's favorite raw materials, and perhaps also God's preferred entry point for breaking into human history. In the beginning, opens the book of Genesis, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Later in Genesis, God shows Abraham a night sky filled with stars and promises that his descendants will outnumber them. Jacob wrestles with an angel at night on the riverbank. Joseph interprets the dreams Pharaoh has dreamt at night. Then in Exodus, God appears as a burning bush. Perhaps Moses looks aside and notices it, because of the contrast of a darkening sky. God leads the Israelites through the wilderness by a pillar of fire by night. God speaks to the prophets in their dreams. Spinning forward through time and salvation history, we know that Nicodemus came to question Jesus at night. And we know that it was still dark 
on the first Easter when the women made their way to Jesus' empty tomb. But backing up a bit, on this night, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, born to refugee parents in a cave lit only by the stars and moon. Thus, the carols we sing have a familiar theme. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. O oh, holy night, silent night. These hymns of the Christian church celebrate the beauty and the holiness of the darkness that welcomed the Christ child. Even now, we can look up at the stars and gaze in awe at the reminder that we ourselves are tiny yet beloved parts of a much larger creation. So how did we ever get to the point of equating darkness with evil and light with good? Since when did we decide that darkness was something the light could or should vanish? Professor of Hebrew Bible and Episcopal priest Wilda Gaffney writes of the danger of pitting light and dark as false analogies for good and evil, respectively. My darkness, my blackness are not trash to be cast away, she says, no matter what the collect my church prayed over me says. With this statement, Gaffney rightly cautions those of us who write liturgies that when we thoughtlessly equate darkness with evil and light with good, there are real, negative, and hurtful consequences, consequences that fall disproportionately on the bodies of people of color. If you're skeptical, if you're thinking that this kind of criticism has gone too far, I invite you to consider what it would be like if the tables were turned. What if you were constantly bombarded with metaphors that belittled your existence or a part of you that you could not nor would not change? If you engage that thought for even a few moments, it becomes easy to see how hurtful our mostly unintentional mistakes can be. But we in the church are not the only ones who misuse metaphors of dark and light. We sometimes say and believe that we are living in dark times. What do we mean? I think I know. A global pandemic rages, much as we would like to see it disappear. In our own country, children are drinking water poisoned with lead. Their counterparts throughout the world are drinking water that will give them parasites, dysentery, cholera, and other preventable diseases. There were 24,032 shootings in Pittsburgh so far in 2021. And it's sad to have to say so far, knowing that the number will rise over the next week. We are no strangers to grief, to heartbreak, to the loss of loved ones, to medical diagnoses that would kill us, to depression or anxiety or addiction. But why call these dark times? They are formidable times, yes, but not inherently dark. They're scary, for sure, but why dark? Darkness in the literal sense may very well cloak what we're afraid of, but darkness also gives us the rest we need. Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor puts it this way, Darkness is shorthand for anything that scares me, either because I am sure that I do not have the resources to survive it or because I do not want to find out. If I had my way, I would eliminate everything from chronic back pain to fear of the devil from my life and the lives of those I love. At least, I think I would. The problem is this. When, despite all my best efforts, the lights have gone off in my life, plunging me into the kind of darkness that turns my knees to water, I have not died. 
The monsters have not dragged me out of bed and taken me back to their lair. Instead, I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light, things that have saved my life over and over again, so that there is really only one logical conclusion. I need darkness as much as I need light. To push Taylor's point even farther, I believe the truth is that we need the darkness not only as much as we need the light, but also in order to see the light for all it's worth. Save the sun, we cannot see the stars during the day. Nor do we know the depths of gratitude until we are put in a position in which we must become truly grateful for the kindness of others. The prologue to the Gospel according to John that I will read a little later on during this service includes some of the most beautiful poetry written in Biblical Greek. It's a hymn, a song that places the birth of Jesus that we celebrate this night on a cosmic scale. For the Gospel writer according to Luke, tonight's beauty is to be found in the details in bands of cloth swaddling a vulnerable infant, in a full inn and the stench of a stable, in astonished shepherds and insistent angels, but most of all in a child lying in a manger. But John, John pulls the telescope away from our eyes and gives us the macro view. The birth of Jesus is a part of creation from the beginning, from the beginning, from God's first canvas of dark and deep in Genesis. And when the light of Christ comes into the world, it's not to shoo the darkness away. If it were, God has royally failed. Because within each and every one of us is a darkness that needs the light of Christ just as the light of Christ finds our darkness lovely enough to enter into, to walk alongside us as a God who is with us this Christmas and every day to come. Listen to the way John writes it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Of course the darkness did not overcome the light. It was never meant to do that. The darkness was Christ's place of welcome. The light didn't shine without it, without the mystery and the tension and the joy and the sorrow of being human. God said, let there be light, and the darkness did not disappear. It entered into a dance with the light the one fading into the other and back again every day and night ever since. In the same way, the salvation the baby Jesus in the manger offers us this holy night won't make the joy or the pain of being human disappear. I'm sorry, it just won't. But I believe with all my being that it means the God of every star and of every sheepdog and of every terrified human is right here with us in all of it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And perhaps because of the backdrop of our own deep darkness, we have seen His glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Beloved ones, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. The light shines in the darkness. Thank God for both. In the name of the creator of the stars of night, the savior born in a manger, and the sustainer of us all. Amen.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we praise and worship you on this holy night for the gift of your Son, the Lord of the universe wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all lying in a manger, the light of all people shining in the darkness. Draw us into the great mystery of your love, O Lord. We pray for the church in all places as we unite in celebration of Christ's birth. Bless all who are entrusted with your message of light and love, that your word might be proclaimed with truth and courage throughout your beloved world. Join our voices with the heavenly host that we may sing your glory on high. Gather our hearts in the prophets longing for your promises fulfilled. Grant reconciliation to those surrounded with conflict and violence, that they may live in a peace of this holy night. Grace with compassion all who are cold, hungry, or alone. Embrace with your tender care all who have no place to lay their head, that they may experience the hope of this night. Be with all who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who walk in the darkness of pain or grief this season, to all who are suffering or sick, and to all whom we remember now in our hearts. As you have risen with healing in your wings, may these and all people feel the comfort of this holy night. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited. Inspire those who are doubting your power, those who struggle to receive your mystery and majesty, and those who feel distant from your presence by the injustices of this world. Let your spirit breathe upon them and open their hearts and minds to your love made known in such an unexpected way. And with the quiet devotion of Mary and Joseph, Speak tenderly to your people as we bow to worship in gratitude for this wondrous gift of your very self. May the blessings of Christmas be upon us and all people anew. Open our hearts to your presence in our lives and in every place that we may be transformed by the joy and new birth of this holy night. All this we pray for the sake of Jesus Christ, your word made flesh who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, one God forever and ever. Hear us now as we join our voices in the prayer your, our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our second gospel reading comes to us from the gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse. Listen again for the word made flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Friends, tonight we have heard the story of shepherds and angels, kings and magi, an inn filled to capacity, a star lighting the way. We too have journeyed to Bethlehem to behold the mystery of God who came to be with us, for us, and for all people. As children of God, one and all, may we be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi and the peace of the Christ child. And may God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and those whom you love and those whom only God loves this holy Christmas night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>